Periodontitis is a destructive inflammation and infection of the tissues that anchor the tooth and it's initiated by bacteria in dental plaque. Chronic periodontitis begins with the build-up of certain bacteria in dental plaque on the tooth root in the small crevice between the tooth and the gum. These bacteria feed off the host and release toxins into the gum tissue. This results in the destruction of the gum tissue and ultimately tooth loss. Dentists currently treat chronic periodontitis by manually removing the plaque, but the problem is that the specific bacteria that cause the disease continue to recolonize the site. People that have periodontitis usually notice bleeding gums, bad breath, bad taste or loose teeth. Once you have the disease, it cannot be cured. What we aim to do is stop the progression of disease and stop it from recurring. Basically anyone with teeth can get periodontitis, but as it tends to be, in most patients, slowly progressive over time, you tend to see it in patients who are 40 or older. I was at a routine dental check where uh, the dentist noticed um, uh, an amount of mobility in my teeth that, that alarmed him, so sent me off immediately for x-rays. I went to a dentist for a checkup, and he commented on my bleeding gums and said, uh, you really need to see a periodontist immediately. Because periodontitis is a destructive disease, it has to be measured by the amount of destruction that has occurred. So the dentist will use a probe to measure the pockets around a patient's teeth and he will, or she will use x-rays to also help assess how much bone loss has occurred. The problem with the diagnosis of periodontal disease it occurs after the damage has happened. It is much easier to treat periodontal disease in its early stages. However, very often we get it in its late stages. I had flu, virus-like symptoms. Um, I was extremely tired. It was like having chronic fatigue uh, and chronic ear, nose and throat problems. To effectively treat periodontitis, you have to improve the patient's home care, plus the dentist has to meticulously clean all of their teeth. This generally involves four lengthy visits, usually with local anaesthetic, and it doesn't stop there because patients will always build up plaque and you must continually remove it. So if all goes well after the first course of treatment, patients go into what we call maintenance and they need generally three or four thorough cleanings a year for the rest of their life. Initially um, every three months uh, seeing the periodontist um, which involves deep cleaning under the gum line um, also I had a surgical procedure called a phrenectomy um, which is designed to stop your teeth spreading. Um, now I see the periodontist every six months and a, a regular dentist in between. So it, every three months I'm having some kind of treatment. If patients can't complete treatment or can't continue maintenance then unfortunately over time they lose teeth. and. Every dentist will tell you they have patients who are desperate to hang on to their teeth. They don't want to lose them. I wouldn't like to have to maintain dentures and, and be taking them in and out. And <laughs> no, I, I mean, not that, to be able to, to function and chew food and so on, I, I, I figure that the, the real teeth are going to do a better job. You'll always be better off having your own teeth. Once you start having to replace teeth with dentures or crowns or bridges or implants, then you tend to get more problems with them. They also, with loose, poorly functioning teeth, find it difficult to chew things like steak or crisp fruit and vegetables or fibrous vegetables. So an issue with patient nourishment actually comes in here. Patients also with periodontitis have a chronic infection and if that is persistent, it makes them feel generally unwell and it also means that their body's immune system is stressed and they don't get over other infections such as cold and flus in a timely way. Because of my ill health and my ability to earn, uh, it's had a great economic impact on my family as well. I worry about ongoing health concerns. Um, I have some intestinal problems with not being able to chew, chew food properly. Um, there is um, 
strong evidence now that, that uh, there is a link between periodontal disease and cardiovascular heart disease. Uh, on a sort of more personal note, um, I worry that my appearance has changed um, through having teeth removed and also um, having gaps, large gaps in my teeth that weren't there before and uh, this has affected my confidence in uh, dealing with, with my clients. I'm self-employed, um, I do deal, deal directly with clients and uh, I have noticed that I tend not to open my mouth as much as I used to and, and smiling I, is, uh, feels a little uncomfortable to me now. At the CRC for Oral Health Science, we've been designing a vaccine for chronic periodontitis. How we've gone about this is by first identifying the proteins on the bacteria that are associated with the disease that your body recognises. We've then made them here in the laboratory and found out which ones produce very strong and long-lasting immunity. In a nutshell, this is how our vaccine will work. We have identified proteins on the surface of the bacteria that can be used as a vaccine against the disease. Once a person has received the vaccine, the body is stimulated to release these antibodies from the gum tissue. They recognize and bind to the bacteria, blocking the bacteria from attaching to the tooth root and preventing them from re-establishing in the dental plaque. With the recolonization process disrupted, the disease is stopped. The antibody against the bacteria can also be used as a chair-side diagnostic tool that will enable dentists to detect the specific bacteria before symptoms of the disease can be clinically visible. At this moment in time, we have no way of predicting who's going to get periodontal disease or whether periodontal disease is going to occur. If we could work out who was going to get it, we could then target our preventive device to them or if we could predict what was going to break down, we could then try to treat these sites before the disease occurred, as this is much easier, much simpler, and much more effective than treating things once the disease has occurred. What the vaccine means is that for the first time, dentists will be able to treat the disease rather than just manage the symptoms. And for patients, it means fewer trips to the dentist and that they'll be able to keep their natural teeth.